Ladies and gentlemen, the Linux kernel is about to start getting rusty. That's right, the famous or infamous Rust programming language, depending on how you want to look at it, is going to start showing up in the Linux kernel. Now, Rust has been gaining massive popularity over the years. Many popular applications like Firefox, Threema, even Dropbox's file synchronization engine is written in Rust. But these are all user space applications. What about a kernel? Is Rust an appropriate language to be built into a kernel? Well, I've never written kernel code or coded in Rust for that matter, so I can't really give you an expert opinion directly. Uh, but here's what I do know. There have been attempts to build entire Unix-like operating systems in Rust, uh, Redox OS is probably the most popular example and i might do a video about it if you guys are interested uh, i have tried this out a while ago in a vm and it wasn't bad you know i wouldn't be surprised if it's a whole lot better now uh, so i think that this is pretty good as far as maybe a rough draft for compatibility with using rust and you know building a whole operating system with it uh, the major difference would be that React uses a micro kernel, and of course Linux is a monolithic kernel, so totally different types. Um, but there have been kernel modules that people have been writing in Rust for years now for Linux. So the idea of putting Rust into the kernel, the Linux kernel, isn't exactly some type of crazy idea that's out of left field. Now, there are some pros and cons that I can see with adding Rust to the kernel and that I've been reading about from uh, people that are more experts. Um, so, you know, Rust, it is a much safer programming language by default. And this is because you can compile Rust code. Uh, well, when you compile Rust code, your compiler is going to error out and refuse to compile code that would cause things like a buffer overflow or dangling pointers or any other kind of nasty undefined behavior. So that way, if somebody is not super careful or maybe is an amateur developer, they can create code uh, that is more secure with regards to memory safety um, that they might not be able to do with C or C++. Now, it is important to point out that C and C++ languages themselves, they are not insecure. You know, at the end of the day, a security issue is going to be introduced by a bug and bugs are introduced by people making mistakes. So if you write a C or C++ program correctly and you go through the proper QA process to check for security problems, then you'll be fine. Um, now, some other benefits to uh, using Rust that were mentioned in this RFC about adding it um, to the Linux kernel is that you have a stricter type system uh, for further reduction of logic errors. So this kind of goes um, with the whole security, the extra security that you get with Rust that I just discussed. There is a clear distinction between safe and unsafe code. So there is an unsafe compiler flag that you can enable in Rust to create code that is unsafe that might uh, be able to cause some of those memory issues that we were talking about, but that is actually sometimes necessary uh, in certain instances, especially with very low level development and also in areas where Rust is going to be talking to C or to another programming language. Um, so Rust is also a very featureful language, okay? So it's got uh, some types, pattern matching, generics, RAII, all of these uh, additional features. Um, there are way more features that Rust brings to the table, and this is mostly because it's a much more modern language. And one of the cool things about Rust is that even though it's newer, um, it still has a lot more features and is generally just as fast as C or C++. Now, Rust being newer, it also means that you have more developers that are going to be likely to learn it. So, you know, C has been around for a long time, uh, I think since like the 1970s, like early, early 70s. And if you've ever met a C developer or, or even a C++ developer at this point, you know, somebody who actually works with it every single day and specializes in those languages, they're probably an older person. Um, there's not, 
you know, people that are coming out of college right now, people that are in their 20s, generally don't really know C and C++. The new generation of developers are not learning it in school. Uh, they don't need to learn it in order to work and make money. And a lot of the time it's more difficult to actually build things in C or C++ than these newer languages. So why would they even bother learning uh, these system languages? And in a lot of cases, newer developers aren't learning system languages at all because web apps and online apps are all the rage right now. Uh, but you get the idea. Someone needs to maintain all of this code that's being written once all of the C and C++ wizards are gone. Like it's, you kind of have this issue with things like COBOL, for example, um, which I think goes back even further than C, but like it's so difficult to find anybody who's actually working, like not retired, that knows that language very well. And so you end up with people that are almost like trying to decipher hieroglyphics uh, when they're trying to figure out the code base of these really old legacy systems. But yeah, once all the C and C++ wizards are gone, um, if all of the kernel is written in something that the new devs can't understand, then things are going to get really bad. Uh, now, as far as the negatives go, let's look at the uh, why not down here. Um, and, and one thing that I don't even think that's mentioned here, which is just kind of more my opinion, um, is that simply adding another language to the kernel, regardless of how good it is, it kind of violates the KISS principle, right? Keep it simple, stupid, which is a good philosophy to follow, not just in programming, but in just about anything, you know, engineering, building a business, you wanna keep things as simple as possible because the more complexity that you invite into the system, the more moving parts, the more chance for something to go wrong. Linux is already a pretty big monolithic kernel. Uh, there's about 28 million lines of code in the kernel right now, and it's had about a million commits on it, and that's just on GitHub. You know, It's been worked on for more than 10 years uh, before it was ever on GitHub. And another issue, which is, a really personal one to me, and it was mentioned in here that it's really more just an issue for developers, which I disagree with because this is something that uh, I'm going to deal with and some of you might deal with, and I don't consider myself a developer. Um, but it's that Rust is, if it's going to be a hard dependency, if you're using Gentoo or some other source-based distro, then you're going to have to compile Rust in order to compile your kernel, which adds a significant amount of overhead uh, to the whole job. Like on my system, for example, uh, and I'll just show this to sort of prove a point. So this is compiling Rust, but it actually takes longer just to compile devlang Rust uh, than it does to compile my internal, my, my entire kernel uh, on Gentoo. So you get the idea. Um, and then there's also the fact that uh, compiling Rust code in general takes longer than compiling C and C++ code. So if people are actually going to start writing a lot of drivers in Rust, which is kind of the idea, you know, get people to create drivers in Rust for newer hardware when possible, then running a source-based distro like Gentoo to work with that hardware is going to be even more difficult than it already is. Um, Rust also doesn't have as many compilers available for it compared to C and C++ and doesn't have nearly the same level of platform support that C and C++ have, uh, again, because Rust is much newer. So requiring uh, Rust for the Linux kernel, it could cause Linux to no longer work on some more obscure platforms. But even if you're using something fairly standard like x86 or AMD64, uh, there are hardware limitations. Um, so like for example, you saw when I was emerging Rust here that it's checking to see if you have at least uh, 10 gigabytes of disk space available. Now this is probably more for just compiling it. Um, I don't think you necessarily would need that if you're just going to download a binary of Rust, but you get the idea. Like it can add more restrictions in place as far as what's going to be able to work on your system or whether uh, a rusty kernel is gonna be able to work on your system at all. But let's take a look at what Linus Torvalds uh, actually said, who, if you didn't know, is the creator of the Linux kernel. Uh, it's his baby. And his initial reaction to 
you know, these uh, individual patches going into the kernel is that on the whole, he doesn't hate it, which really is a pretty big compliment coming from someone like Linus. So yeah, if it, if it has his approval, then it's definitely going to happen. But I'd like to know what you guys think. Do you think that Rust is going to be um, good for the kernel? Do you think that the entire Linux kernel is one day going to be written in Rust like the one that Redox uses? Do you think that there is going to be a fork of the Linux kernel where one has Rust and the other one is Rustless? I think that that could happen, at least for a little while, but again, the code base of the kernel is so large that I don't think that the effort can really be kept up for very long, especially since it kind of seems like the majority of people are in favor of the Linux kernel getting rusted. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and have a nice day.